Picture this. The sun is setting over the African savanna. Streaks of red, orange, and pink paint the sky over the trees as the hot sun slips slowly behind the horizon. The air cools, if only slightly, and the only thing left to do is to sit and reflect on the day, listening to the sounds of the African bush. A lion's roar in the distance, or the songs of various brightly colored birds. <laughs> With a drink in your hand, of course. There is no definitive recipe for a sundowner cocktail. Actually, a sundowner is a ritual. A drinking tradition that originated in the 1800s in South Africa during British colonial rule, which marks the transition from day to evening. A drink that is taken at sundown. And the beverage of choice, which is arguably the uh, most popular sundowner drink, is the gin and tonic. Probably because back then, it was taken for malaria prevention and other tropical diseases because of the quinine in the tonic water. Today, well, people drink it for pleasure instead of uh, medical purposes. That said, there is a sundowner cocktail that is popular in South Africa where it's made with locally produced brandy and a local orange liqueur called Vanderhoom. Back in 1970, a long way from South Africa, a bartender by the name of Pedro J. Mileta Jr. was working at the Sheridan Maui Resort's Barkentine Bar, where he created a new sundowner cocktail for a worldwide cocktail competition. It was held by Sheridan International and the cognac producers of France. The judges, well, included James Beard himself. <laughs> How cool is that? Well, Pedro Mileta's sundowner cocktail placed first in the competition. His prize was $1,500 in cash. That would be equivalent to like, well, close to $12,000 in today's dollars. So his prize was $1,500 or a two-week all-expense-paid trip to Paris and Cognac. Pedro, he took the cash and made a down payment on a house for his family. According to Pedro's granddaughter, Joy, she said for a time, the sundowner was featured in their hotel bars on tabletop signs, pictures, and coasters. But its popularity has since faded away. So, I thought I'd like to make this prize-winning cocktail for you. <laughs> and maybe, just maybe, we can bring it back so that it doesn't get completely forgotten. Sounds like a plan. Okay, let's make Pedro Moleta's prize-winning cocktail. <laughs> We're gonna start with uh, cognac. I got Hennessy, of course I do. Um, one and a quarter ounces of Hennessy. We're gonna follow that up with some Cointreau. Three quarter ounce. Whoa. I love Cointreau. Mmm, I love turtles. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> I hate turtles. I love Cointreau. <laughs> Next is Galliano. Galliano Lathentico. You could use Galliano Vanilla, but back in 1970, they, they probably didn't make this yet. I know they didn't make this yet because I was doing the liquor order back then and uh, it was not available. So, and I actually have tried it with uh, Galliano vanilla and there's, it's, there's too much vanilla forward notes going on. You still get um, some uh, vanilla notes from Galliano Authentico, not as not as uh, intense as, as that. Plus, this is 42.3%. This is 30%. So, yeah. <laughs> if you're gonna sundown, let's do a sundowner. 
properly. Three quarters of an ounce. It's pouring like sludge, man. Okay, there it is. Beautiful. The next thing in Pedro's recipe was uh, lemon juice. One ounce of lemon juice. Fresh pressed. Don't give me anything other than fresh pressed. And a mess all over the bar again. Of course there's. Because <laughs> that's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There we go. There's an ounce. <laughs> so I'm going to fine strain this because, well, there's a seed in there. Yeah. We don't want seeds in our drink. And uh, we'll just clean up our mess here. <laughs> Life is messy. Clean it up. <laughs> and that's all there is to it. We're going to ice this up. with some ice, uh, well, of course. <laughs> How are you gonna ice without ice? Uh, that made no sense. <laughs> Lots of ice. We're gonna pop a lid on and we're gonna shake it. Viv, how are we shaking? Like we're running from a herd in the savannah. Ah, like you're running from a herd of what? Wild elephants in the savannah. Oh my God. <laughs> They got me. <laughs> no, they didn't get me. I got to get my uh, glass out of the freezer. This actual recipe was found in uh, Beach Bum Berry's remixed uh, cocktail book. And um, all we're gonna do, <laughs> what is suggested in here, is uh, a dirty dump. Just a dirty dump unstrained. There it is, the sundowner. And uh, it's garnished with a lime wheel. Where's my lime? Right here. <laughs> there it is. All right, let's check this out. The sundowner. Whoa, Lemon City. Uh, yeah, yeah, lemons come poking its head through. I'm gonna throw that right in there. Yeah, that makes more sense to me. Very invigorating. Really lemon driven. There's almost too much lemon, as far as I can tell. But now I'm getting the, um, the aftertaste. I'm getting uh, anise notes from the uh, Galliano, which is kind of very nice, actually. I'm getting the citrus from the Cointreau. Brandy is kind of buried. It's kind of like, I mean, it's pulling it together, I'm thinking. As I'm drinking it, my uh, taste buds are climatizing. And this is actually really, really refreshing, for sure. It's, it's quite vibrant. I like it. You know, another option <laughs> would be to serve it in a chilled martini glass. You know, all we gotta do, really, you know, is serve it straight up. Why not? That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Oh yeah. This changes perspective completely, doesn't it? Yeah. Check it out. <laughs> Checking out the same drink. <laughs> Why not? But, you know, it, it takes on a different profile, whether it's in a over the over ice or straight up. It does, it really does. Oh, I kind of like that better in a weird, wonderful way. I think I'd like it on the rocks if I'm sitting on a patio, <laughs> hanging out <laughs> with my friends, just doing the sundowner thing, right? Ooh, sun gazing. <laughs> Have you ever done that? I love sun gazing. It's, it's so therapeutic and just feels absolutely wonderful. 
To all of our viewers at home, please do not take Bruce's advice and sun gaze by staring directly at the sun. You will burn out your retinas. <laughs> no, Aaron. <laughs> it's, it's when the sun is so low on the horizon that you can actually look at it and not burn yourself out. And it's just like the most wonderful, warming feeling you'll ever have. Bar Talk and Cocktails does not advocate the activity of staring directly at the sun, no matter what position in the sky it's in. You need special glasses, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. All I know is you need to make a sundowner cocktail so it doesn't get forgotten, okay? Uh, this is absolutely, you know, it's really actually very nice. It's maybe a little too lemony for me, but everybody's palate is different. So, make a sundowner. So would you say Bruce is the only one staring at the sun? <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? I gotcha, I gotcha. Say goodnight, Aaron. Good night, Aaron. <laughs>